Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Regroup Show. I am your host, LJ Walker, a real estate investor helping you realize your dreams of owning a home or investing in one. Well, the latest developments with the Tulsa Real Estate Fund saga is that Julian Gordon, who was the top investor, has recently called out Jay Morrison in public. So let's talk about it, guys. Julian Gordon is someone who does come from the same city as I do. I don't know him, never met him personally. I do follow him on social media. I've made comments on his posts and he's always agreed with what I had to say. That's why I was shocked when I found out that he invested in the fund, much less be a top investor. I just figured that since we were, it seems as though we were on the same wave path, I didn't think he would go forward with this. But then when he also said that he was Jay's friend, I said, oh, okay, then that's definitely a reason why he moved forward plus the vision he mentioned that the vision is what he was really behind a lot of real estate investors were for the vision we just weren't for the numbers we did not like the way the deal was structured so that's why we did not get in now i know others who claim that they were going to work with jay i can't remember this one particular guy's name i can see his face and everything but i can't remember his name and he was with jay early but he also left early as well he didn't he didn't stay around long and he didn't say why um his name i, I was trying to look him up to see if i could find him on social media but he really wasn't someone who was on social media heavy like that you know what i mean so unfortunately i can't i, I can't name him um on clubhouse though there were other people who were real estate investors who say they were uh were in support of jay in support of jay's vision was willing to work with him but they said that they could not, they basically said that Jay had an ego. Allegedly, he has an ego problem. I can't debate that. I can't dispute that because I never met Jay. Jay only came to the group that I was in a lot, back in 2017, and he introduced the fund to us. That's it. Okay. And then I called when I called, I didn't get him. I got somebody else when I had more questions that I wanted answered. So that's as far as my communication goes with both Jay and Julian. It doesn't go any further than that. But anyway, needless to say, Julian says that he tried to reach Jay for over a month. He sent him private messages. Jay did not respond. Not only that, whenever they had Zoom calls for the fund, the chat was turned off. So there was no way for him to speak to the 15,000 investors. That's a lot of people. Uh, for him to share what his thoughts and his feelings were. Jay was also filtering out any questions that were being asked. So some people, they say, well, Julian was being disrespectful. Uh, he shouldn't have outed Jay like that. I disagree. I feel Jay was being disrespectful. If someone is your friend, you don't take over a month to respond to them, especially if that friend gave you $40,000. Now, yes, 
uh, when you are an experienced investor, $40,000 is not a lot of money, okay? Because you can make $40,000 back in less than a year when you're doing real estate, if you do real estate investing the right way, okay? However, if somebody gives you $40,000 and they're your friend, they're not just a friend, that's your best friend. And to me, to wait a month, and, and here's the thing, he didn't respond to Julian until after Julian put out that Instagram post saying that he was going to do a video. That's foul. I don't feel I'm with Julian 100 toes down. If I had 100 toes, I'd be 100 toes down with Julian because that was disrespectful. That was highly disrespectful. And Julian, I really think that he not only fell in love with the vision, but probably also just the idea of being friends with Jay Morrison because friends don't do friends like that, especially friends who give another friend $40,000. Julian is not. Jay is the one that disres disrespected Julian. Okay. So uh, getting back to what Julian has reported or found is that he said that when he looked at the papers, he found that the fund is almost bankrupt. Now, I thought that was common knowledge. I did not know that people did not know this because all they have to do is go to the SEC. But I guess, that, to be honest with you, though, the SEC filings, it's a lot. Because I did go and I was like, oh, no, this is homework. <laughs> and since I'm not invested in this particular fund, I'm not wasting my time doing all this research when I need to do research on and handle all the properties that I own. I don't need to be doing this here. You know what I'm saying? So I was, I was also shocked about that as well. So he further says that he was never given a direct answer on where the fund stands and he was unclear on what the fund, own, fund owns. I was unclear on what the fund owns as well. It wasn't until I listened to another interview that Jay did where I realized that they have the legacy building and then they have a few other properties. But I don't know how much a few is. Is a few four or five? You know, what do you mean by a few? Exactly how much? And then how much are those, how much is the income that's coming in? What's the net income, rather? You know, because Jay likes to, it seems like he likes to just focus on the income and not tell you what the expenses are so that you can subtract that and get the net income. Okay. And that's another issue that's not good because, listen, you have to be in this world, especially today, you have to be transparent. You cannot throw your rock in and hide your hand when it comes to any investment nowadays. You can get sued for that. You can get sued for that. And just because you have the, your paperwork up on the SEC, that's actually not enough. You're supposed to give out, um, like some people give out pro formas or balance sheets or, you know, you're supposed to give your investors something, okay? Some type of paperwork to say, okay, this is what we have, this is what we got, right? And then... For him to be, again, a friend, a friend should get direct answers. Even if you 
don't share with the other investors if this guy is your friend he should have been got a direct answer a long time ago it shouldn't be five years because the fund really didn't open up until like 2018 or so it shouldn't after five years everybody should be clear on what's going on because the bible says what write the vision and make it plain what does plain mean? Make it transparent, make it clear. And it's not good that people are in the dark for so long. Okay, somebody got to turn the light on. And I think that with Julian coming forward, that's what he's doing. All right. Julian also mentioned that, and I believe I, I heard Jace mention that he refinanced the legacy building with interest normally when you refinance you don't refinance when interest rates go up you normally refinance when interest rates go down so i'm kind of wondering does he mean that he pulled equity out of the property and used like a, a home equity well it wouldn't be a home but i'm just i'm just wondering i'm kind of curious about that I, I never knew, believe it or not, I'm I'm going to admit it. I never knew that banks would let you refinance when the interest rates were up. I thought it was only when it goes down. But you know what? You learn something new every day. <laughs> okay. So next thing that triggered me was that he mentioned that there was more money given to employees and the employees didn't even work full time hmm yeah there's definitely miss allegedly mismanagement of funds let me catch myself right there before you know i say the wrong thing but that it that did that would not make sense and i did notice too that jay kept paying himself management fees if the fund is tanking allegedly normally they don't keep well they may pay management fees but not the full amount and the management fees as i mentioned in the video that i did years ago normally they're not five percent they're normally a lot less than that that was another thing reason why the fund turned me off okay uh the other thing that he mentioned was julian mentioned was that he noticed that the executives kept changing and i believe when i looked at the video which was the interview of one of jay's former employees he said he mentioned the same thing as well that can cause a lot of confusion when executives there's a high turnover of people uh, when there's a high turnover that also takes money away from whatever project you're working on whether it's real estate or something else um, and it causes confusion also because i had a job where that very same thing happened I would send something to somebody who quote unquote handled X, Y, Z, and then turn around and find out, oh, that person doesn't work there anymore. And then I would have to track the package to, to figure out, okay, uh, now let's redirect the package or email or whatever to somebody else. So it, it can cause confusion and confusion is not good in business again whether it's real estate related or not okay so uh julian one of the things that he recommended was that the legacy building be liquidated in order to give the money back to the investors well i again it 
that probably would be the best thing to do. It probably would be the best thing to do. If he does not want to do that, though, I mean, of course, I hope he will consult other real estate investors who, Jay, would consult other real estate investors who still like him, who still believe in him, and who still have hope in him. Because believe it or not, there are some real estate investors that are still for Jay Morrison. And these are the same real estate investors that did not invest in the fund. <laughs> okay, so maybe Jay will definitely listen to what Julian uh, mentions here. Julian also mentioned that he needs to decrease his operating expenses as well. And Julian also mentioned, and I noticed this too, that it did appear as though Jay was leasing his other companies to the Legacy Center. And that seemed to be the bulk of the income from the Legacy Center. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that doesn't look good. That doesn't, that doesn't really look good. <laughs> so, yeah, I would say liquidating does sound like it's a good thing but Jay actually hasn't really come out much as you know to the public as far as what he plans to do with this fund he just came out the other day and said that he was going to create a brand new fund and that he was looking to raise money for this brand new fund and I'm like hmm that's that's interesting. <laughs> that, that's really interesting. Look, guys, uh, there you have it. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, how do you feel about Julian coming out? How do you feel about what has been said? Because, you know, I was really more on the outside looking in. Julian is actually an insider, if you will. Uh, if you disagree with Julian coming out the way he did, how else would you recommend he come out? If he's not answering phone calls, emails, and text messages, what else should Julian have done? And before you answer, if you did not put the money in and you disagree with Julian, put yourself in Julian's shoes for a minute. You invested $40,000 into a fund to help out your friend, to help out the culture, the community, and your friend ain't returning your phone call. And after five years, your friend who you invested in, who you invested with, still has not clearly said to you what is the direction and the goal of this particular fund. And mind you, mind you, Julian does have his own fund. Julian has invested with other real estate investors. Julian also has brought other real estate investors and their deals to Jay. And Jay did not want to have anything to do with them. Said that it didn't fit their goal, their vision. Allegedly. That's what he says. If Jay did say that, because again, I wasn't in the room I wasn't part of the conversation, then I would have to agree with the people on Clubhouse that says that there may be an ego issue that's causing the problem. Because there are people who, you know, there are some people who say this is a scam. Other people say, no, it's not a scam. It's mismanagement of funds. And then other people say it's not a scam. 
It is mismanagement of funds, but it's due to ego. Meaning, Jay wants his name to be the forefront and not someone else's name. He, he may be afraid to, quote unquote, share the glory with someone else. But here's the thing that I want people to remember. And, you know, the thing is this. I, the other thing that Julian mentioned, too, that some people may have come against him for was the fact that Jay was new. Jay was not new to real estate, but he was new to setting up a real estate fund. It's very clear to me that he was. But the thing is, there are everybody's a beginner at some point. Some beginners make it, some beginners don't. What you got to realize, though, is okay for you to drive the train, but you got to have a conductor on that train that's less letting passengers on and letting passengers off. And maybe what they're saying about Jay is correct. So again, what are your thoughts? I know some of you already told me what your thoughts are. You think I'm confused. Listen, it doesn't even matter if I'm confused. Like I said, I'm not investing. I'm not. I didn't invest the first time because I didn't like the numbers. And when it comes to business, I want to see green. Green is the most important color I want to look at. And if I don't see green, I'm not investing, period. <laughs> okay, so... Guys, what are your thoughts? Uh, please let me know below. And then also, uh, Julian mentioned that he is going to have a site set up where you guys who have invested can fill out a form to indicate, you know, what your thoughts, feelings are, I, I believe, and, you know, like how, how much you invested in. Uh, but yeah, you, being transparent is definitely, definitely something that is important in today's world because there's another very famous, well, I, I say famous, but I really mean popular uh, person who is a real estate investor who actually is currently being sued. And the thing about it is, is that his, he is actually making money for uh, his people. It's kind of low though. It's, it's, it's 8%. It's a flat 8%. But it is still, in my opinion, low. If you, if I'm not making double digits, I'm not, I'm not looking at it. I mentioned that before. I'll mention it again and again and again and again. If I'm not making double digits, it's not, it's not worth my time at all. No matter who it is, and that that person who's being sued right now is Grant Cardone, because. His investors allegedly said that he's not being transparent in how he has invested their money. Okay. And, and I have to say, I do feel as though Jay Morrison is trying to copy Grant Cardone. I think that's why he spent so much more money in marketing himself and the fund he really spent i i kind of feel like he marketed himself over the fund that's my two cents on the matter so guys drop your comments in and let us know what you think all right so feel free to share this amongst your friends remember each one reach one teach one bye for now until next time have a good night.